Good morning. Good morning, good day. Welcome to those of you that are here in this room and those of you that are joining us from around the world, wherever you are joining us from at this time to watch and listen. So many of you that are listening by radio in so many different countries. It's good to have you joining us again. It's another moment, another opportunity that we have been given to come together corporately. While God deals with us as individuals on a daily basis, moment by moment, day by day, we see throughout the scriptures, even the Old Testament, there were times that were commanded, even it was put in the commandment for Israel to come together as a people, as a nation. In the New Testament, we see after Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles serve as the template for how we should think about the church coming together. And as I said, God deals with us as individuals on a daily basis, but then there are those moments where the church need, need to come together corporately. And the book of Acts holds the key to that, the mystery to that, the understanding to that. Because there are people who treat this not according to how we should. And when I say people, I'm talking about those of us that are born again. A lot of us even in this room right now, we still don't know. Even though I say it every time we come together, I ask the question, why are we coming together? What is the purpose? I will even say, let us pray into it. Some of you still don't understand it. It's religion for you. So you come when you feel like. You come when it's convenient. And for many people today gathering in some place that they call church, it's about entertainment. The book of Acts holds the mystery of why the church, the church, because a lot of you looking at me, you're not a part of the church. You're a part of, I don't even know if you're a part of KLN Ministries. But you're a part of a religious idea that you dress up and come on a Sunday. Some of you even, some of you looking at me right now, you even come to me and tell me that I am your apostle. No, I am not. You come and tell me that I am your pastor. No, I am not. You're saying it with your lips. You remember, the people came to Jesus. Jesus said, these people, as it is written, as it is written, these people draw near me. So a lot of you come and say things to me. It's not true. These people draw near me with their lips. But their hearts are far from me. They praise me. They worship me. But their worship is based on the, what, the doctrines of men. A lot of the worship going on in church today, it's based on the doctrines of men. God is getting absolutely nothing from it. You are being entertained. Because anytime you love a song, it's not God getting anything from it. It's you. You, th you, think, this is, you think this is a club where you come and select and ask the DJ to play your favorite song? Oh, I love that song. Why do you love it? Think about it. Any song, any song that you call praise and worship song, and you say you love it, why do you love it? You're, you're, not, you're not going to be honest to tell the truth. So let me tell the truth. The reason why you love the song, it's how the song make you feel. It's not the song giving glory and honor to God that you're going to sing it even when you don't feel like it. But the Spirit is saying, this is the song you should sing in this moment. 
and you give yourself to it because we are supposed to be a living sacrifice. I'm not asking you, I don't want you to say amen because I, your amen, many of you, your amen is hypocritical. But I hope that you can hear me today and repent that tomorrow it's not the same thing that you will be doing. I used to have songs that I love. I don't love any song anymore because I found out that I'm not supposed to love it. I'm only supposed to love God and love people. You don't love things. The love of money, root of all evil. Some of us still love money. Anytime you love something, in the natural, the reason why you say you love it, it's how it makes you feel. You make me feel. You make me feel. You make me feel like a natural. Well, me a man. <laughs> and there's a lot of song out there about feelings. And it's all based on feeling. Soul music is based on feelings. Rhythm and blues. It's based on feeling. And it's the same thing that comes into the church. We have music. We have all of this. We have the, we have the stage for praise and worship leaders. It's how they entertain us. We will even go to the person after the meeting and say, wow. Oh, you, you did this today. And, and you, you bring down the curtain. Brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, mash up the church today. Entertainment. You see, when God come, any of you that is under the sound of my voice, you will have not one excuse why you didn't live right. And for those of you that will be going into hell... <laughs> You, 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 you are now and will, if you refuse to repent by then, a wicked person. And that's why Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, wickedness. Don't quote scripture, just think about it. Because I say a lot of you looking at me and you need to repent. You're hypocrites. You come here and you put on something and at home, that's not who you are. Who I am looking at right now, many of you, who I'm looking at right now, when you're at home, that's not who you are. You know how to put on. You know how to have church. You know how to put on the Sunday morning face. You know in the world they talk about your poker face. We know how to put on church face. We know how to put on the Sunday morning face. We know even when to shed a tear. I can see a lot of preachers in the pulpit that are actors and they know when to shed a tear. To let you think that they're truly representing God. Anybody remember a preacher that used to cry a lot? Anybody remember a preacher that used to cry a lot? I think he's still crying. Jimmy Swaggart. Oh my God. And when he cries, it breaks a rat bat's heart. And yet he was still sinning. I am not saying, listen to me carefully right now. I am not saying that when the Spirit genuinely dealing with you, touching you, and breaking you, because the scripture said a broken and a contrite heart, he will not despise. David said, if you wanted burnt offering and sacrifice, I could give it to you, but that's not what you want. You want me. And in that moment, there are genuine tears that is coming out of that experience, out of that reality. But for some people, the tears is not real. 
They know how to do it. They're actors. They're actors. Wow. We're going to continue reading in the book of Acts. Not Acts. Oh, maybe we need to go to Acts, but it's not Acts yet. It's the, wrong, it's the person who wrote the book of Acts. And um, I was saying something to my wife last week at home. I said, do you realize that the Luke, Luke, the, the, what they traditionally call the Gospel of Luke, Luke write that to Theophilus to say certain things. And then he comes a second time writing the book, the Acts of the Apostles. And I, I said to him, I said, why do you think it was important for him to do that. While the present church today, we don't understand that. We read the Bible just like we read the newspaper, and then we throw it aside. Until something happens, we go and pick it up again. We need, to, we need to honor God and appreciate his word for what it is and read it in the context and the order in which he gave it to us. Because remember, all scriptures are given by inspiration of God. God gave it to us, but we don't honor God, therefore we can't honor his word either. There is a reason why the book of Acts is written, and it's written first and foremost, remember, to Theophilus. After he was instructed in the things concerning Christ, Luke felt the need by the leading of the Holy Spirit to write Luke he said, I'm going to set in order a narrative based on my perfect understanding of the things that was told to you. And then he picked up and tell him, starting with Zacharias and Elizabeth, John the forerunner, then Christ. And for the rest of the book, it's all about Christ. Now... The Holy Spirit have me speaking about this for the last few weeks, maybe over a month now. We have been talking about faith, and many of you are taking it lightly. I'm going to put it in front of your face, in front of your eyes, one more time. Today might be the last day for some of you, one more time. One more time. And you take this for joke and believe that this is a religious thing, because many people have made it into a religion. And we need to redeem it. We need to take faith, the faith that is important to God, as Hebrews chapter 11 says. Without faith, without. We love quote that. We, we quick to finish it when, when the preacher mentioned it. But we're still not operating in it. Without faith, it is is it is you didn't say that the writer of the book did not say that either when i said the writer i'm talking about the human instrument that the spirit used it's not the source of it that statement is coming from god so that should make me tremble every time i hear it and read it without faith it is impossible to please god Who are you pleasing? Who are you pleasing? Yourself, man, or God? And I'm going to say this to you. If you're not pleasing God, your living is in vain. Because the man that you are pushing to please, they will turn against you in another second. Paul asks the question, am I pleasing man or God? Peter said in Acts chapter 5, we ought to obey God rather than man. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. You see, we're not here to have church as usual. We're not here to have church. We're here as the church 
to be, to, to be what? To be what? What does the scripture say the purpose of the church coming together in, in Ephesians chapter 4? For the equipping. So the apostle, if you're coming in front of an apostle, you're not coming to look at their clothes. You're not coming to be impressed with their speech, how they sound. You're coming to be equipped and to be edified. So whether we sing a song or not, as long as the, watch it, as long as the word of God is coming to equip you, you receive it. But them not sing no song. Them not do this. Them not do this. Who tell you that's how church is supposed to go? Man told us that, right? When Jesus met with the crowd, at what point did Jesus start teaching? You know, there is, Judas, I want you to sing a chorus and warm up the people. Prepare the hearts of the people. I hear dumb, 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 dumb preachers saying, oh, when you sing the song, it prepares. It's not a song that prepares your heart to hear God. It's the Spirit. Jesus never, you never read it where they sing a song. The moment Jesus show up or the people show up where Jesus is, he started teaching. He started teaching because that's the reason why. They're going to be having school here tomorrow because we're in a college. When the professor or the lecturer or whoever is inside here, when he comes in, he says, um, I'm going to ask one of you students to come and sing a song, please, before we do math. Or before we do English. Come on, some of your teachers, that's how they do it at school? The student come in, school bell ring or whatever, and they come in. And before they even come in, some teachers in their class, like half an hour or so before, and they prepare, they put what is, what, what, what is, what is the subject that they're going to deal with. They already write it out, and they put things, and as soon as the student come in, into it. Into it. I'm not afraid of you. I have something for bust your religious head. Because it needs to be burst. Leak out the religious ideas and the religious things that have been built up in it. I'm not afraid of the church. The church needs some roughneck preachers like me. Because the church has gotten to the place where we're so opinionated. And we attack everybody and think everybody afraid of you. I'm, not, I'm one of them that is not afraid of you. You better be afraid of me because of the God in me. You better fear God. So I'm going to tell you the truth. Whether you come or you don't come. Whether you come back or you don't come back. It doesn't matter. And as long as you hear me one time, you are in trouble. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're in trouble. Say, neighbor, I don't care if you want to believe me. You're in trouble. I'm not laughing. Why are you laughing? Did I give you a joke? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an entertainer. When, I, when some of you go and get it, a person that God sent is not an entertainer. There is a soul to save. There is a hell to escape. And every day, Hundreds and thousands and millions of people are going into hell. Broad is the way that leads. And Jesus said, many are on it. The way to life, it's narrow, it's constricted. It's rough, it's hard. And some of you even say it's hard. I have never, over 37 years, walking with God, I have never said it's hard. You say it's hard when you don't know God. You say it's hard when you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. You say it's hard when you're not led by the Spirit. Faith. Matthew chapter 8. We started out looking at Luke chapter 18. Where Jesus talked about man at all ways, ought always to pray and not faint. Not lose heart. And he tell a story for you to get the essence of what it means. Then he ended the story asking a question. In Luke chapter 18 and verse 8. The question is, 
Nevertheless, when the Son of Man return, will he find faith? You know many people are in the choir and they don't have any faith. Do you know many pre preachers preaching in the pulpit? Brother Patrick, in the United States alone, based on their statistics, based on their studies, you have a, there is more than one, but you have this top, um, would I call it an organization or something like that. They, they do certain research and polling so they can tell you how many Christians don't read their Bible. So each time, a certain part, time of the year, they release their findings. And they found out for years now, because I remember this was happening from when I was in Jamaica. In the United States alone, it's a big nation, over 300, the population is over 300 million. Huge. They would love to get Canada. <laughs> and they found out that every month in the United States alone, over 4,000 preachers walk away from the pulpit. For various reasons. Extramarital affair. All different types of things, corruption that come. 4,000 every month, not every year. There are many pastors that, that are even preaching right now. They have already lost the faith. Many of you in this room, you have lost it. And I pray to God that even today, you will be restored. If you hear me and stop pretending like you're there and you're not there. Hear the word of the Lord and stop pointing finger upon people. Allow the word to judge you every time, even when you think you're okay. Do not be self-righteous. When the word comes forth, you say, Father, thank you for your word. He's not talking about me. That's not me. <laughs> Faith, when the Son of Man return, will he find faith on the earth? Now that should make you, every bone, every fiber of your being shake. Because now you understand the moment Jesus made that statement, he understood something about faith that you and I don't get yet and we need to pay attention to what he's saying. Because you see, in Luke chapter 22... When Jesus Christ was about to go to the cross, the night before he was arrested by the temple guards. And when they were all saying, I will die with you, Lord. I will go to prison with you. Peter, Peter was one of them that was adamant. Lord, do everybody forsake you. Me? Jesus and said, Jesus, look at me. You can count on me. I, I, I'm, I'm ready to die for you. I, I'm going to go to prison with you. Jesus said, Peter, Peter, I know you are really zealous. But hold on there. There is something that you need to fulfill. Jesus says, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. Luke chapter 22. Don't turn there, but you mark it down and go home and check it for yourself. I don't make up stuff. He said, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But hear what Jesus says. I am not going to stop it. It's going to happen. He said, but nevertheless, watch this. I pray for you that your faith will remain. And he says, when you are restored, strengthen your brethren. Because you see, it doesn't matter what you go through. You see, as long as your faith remains intact, all when all hell break loose around you, as long as faith remains intact, you will come out and come out stronger. But if faith is lost, shipwreck. It's over. Notice what Jesus said to him. But I pray for you that your faith will remain. Some of your family situation cause you to lose your faith. Some of you, your marriage relation, your marriage, you know, you're in Christ and your marriage are, are cause your faith to be shaken. 
Or some of you women, some of the men them where you know from day one said so they never did born again. And you're married to them. And after marrying to them, you are close to them. You hear their conversation. You sit there and you still have fight for stay in a relationship with them and it affects your faith. Walk away. Divorce them by the time they wink. You, all when them are threatening with divorce, they say, what are you doing? You think that I'm afraid to, to divorce you if I need to walk away from you? Because you're not of God. And if I stay with you, my faith is under threat. See, we don't understand how important faith is. You cut off your mother at the blink of an eye if your mother cross. If your mother come between your faith and God. Jesus said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? Don't just quote. Don't quote. Listen to what I'm saying. Do you think that I'm going to let my wife, if she ever slip up, you think say me, as much as I love her, love her dearly, love her with the love that Christ has flooded me with to prove how the church, Christ is supposed to love the church. If she ever slip up, <laughs> My son will not allow me to lose faith in God. There was a time when I didn't have a child. And for nine years now, God has chosen to bless us with one. You think that I'm going to make him more important than my faith in God? A lot of you, your children, your big old 40-year-old son, you're stressing out yourself. Oh, my God. A Johnny. I, I wonder if Johnny eat. Johnny and no pitney. Johnny and no, Johnny and no baby. Big old 40, rusted. Back, man. You got your bed and can't sleep. After your child reaches a certain age, their decision making is no longer your responsibility. You need to know where to draw the line. But pastor, he's my child. Yeah, go to hell for him. Do you think that when we stand up before God, God is going to let in family? No, it's individually. Every single person will have to give an account to God. And God is not going to ask a husband about his wife. Notice when God showed up in the garden after man sin. Did he ask Adam about Eve? Did he ask Eve about Adam? No. He said, Adam, what is this that you have done? And then notice, Adam say, the woman that you gave me. And think that God was going to say, oh, yes. Oh, yes, I made a mistake. Sorry, Adam. And then God turned to the woman and said, what, did, what is this that you have done? Oh, the serpent deceived me. Notice now, there's a blame game. And she's thinking now that God said, oh, yeah, 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 he did. Okay. And then God turned to the serpent. Who is the serpent going to blame now? <laughs> the snake. The, <laughs> Satan is going to say, oh, the snake. You know, the snake enticed me because he's so cunning. A lot of you need to wake up and understand who God is. You are worshiping a God that you have created. But the God of this Bible, he's a holy God. He's a righteous God. He's a God that is serious. The scripture says we must fear him because he's a, he's a consuming fire. Sometimes when I hear about some sin we are going in other congregation here, yeah. I say, God Almighty, under this kind of teaching, with this kind of an example in front of you, and you still have practice that kind of sin? The fear of God is out the door. That you do what you do and wipe your mouth like a fowl and come in here and sit in front of me and acting like you're... Uh, I pray for you, Peter, that your faith will remain. I pray for you, Peter, that your faith will remain. I pray for some of you in this room today that your faith will be restored. Some of you, it was never there in the first place, so you need to be born again. Because when I see some things and hear some things, I, the first question that comes to my mind, was that brother even born again? Was that sister born again? Because when you're born again, even when you're not 
in certain knowledge and of certain understanding yet because of an impact of the spirit in you it begin to affect it begin to affect you that you don't sin and feel comfortable any longer it bothers you and still you stop and many of us are sinning and have absolutely no regret. You know why I know? Because you keep on practicing it. Don't take God's mercy for granted. Do not take God's forgiveness for granted. Because you never know that when you do that sin again one more time, you may never live to tell the tales. That's why you must fear God. I don't look for opportunities to sin. I look for opportunities to stay away from sin. Whether in public or private. Because sin by itself will destroy you. The Bible says whoever confesses their sin will find what? Mercy. But whoever covers it up. What's going to happen to you? In Matthew chapter 8, doesn't matter where this end up, I'm following the Spirit. In Matthew chapter 8, faith. In Matthew chapter 8, what I want you to see in this passage that I'm going to read is the connection of where faith is concerned, the connection of faith and the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. Kingdom of Christ. I want you to see this carefully. So even as I teach the kingdom, and many of you take what you want, you think you want... And you impose yourself on what I'm teaching and telling yourself what you want to tell yourself. Do you know? Do you know the importance of an apostle? Do you know why God chose apostles? Do you know why? Do you know why there is a book in the Bible called the Acts of the Apostles? Do you know why? Do you know how important apostles are to God and the church? And you wonder why the church continue to be in the state that it's in? We do not have true apostles. Verse 5 says, when Jesus had entered Capernaum. Capernaum after a while became... To use this term for you to get a little understanding, it, it became like the headquarters for Jesus' ministry. That it doesn't matter where he goes, you will find him returning to Capernaum. He was born in Bethlehem of Judea. He grew up in Nazareth. That's why they refer to him as Jesus of Nazareth. He grew up in Nazareth. But when he was baptized by John and entered into ministry, if you want to call it that, Capernaum was where he stayed. So notice the scripture said, when he had entered Capernaum, a centurion, a Roman centurion, came to him pleading, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant... So this is an important servant to him. My servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. So we know that this was not just a natural occurrence. There were demonic spirits that were at play here. Dreadfully tormented. Notice that. And Jesus said to him, I will come. I will come to your house and heal him. 
the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak, only speak. What are you here to hear? A word from God. What is that word? Huh? How is that word going to come to you? Because how can they preach unless they are sent? So many, Brother Patrick, for years we have been listening to preachers that have not been sent. And it messes us up. Because everywhere one look a whole panak. Especially Caribbean people. We, we are gravitated to go there. And boy, the, I love all that preacher preach. You're not supposed to love how the preacher preach. You should love what the preacher preach. And if the preacher is not preaching the word, you, you run for your life. I will come to your house and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord... I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word. And my servant, my servant, not maybe, my servant will be healed. What is it that the man knew? Why is he speaking with such confidence? That though, though I don't want you to come under my roof. What I know is that if you speak a word, my servant that is miles away will be healed. Do you know that there are people who leave this ministry because I didn't come and pray for them at their house? Do you know that there are people who leave this ministry because they have some kind of accident and they claim that me never call them and pray with them? All the word will you all get if I didn't call you. You mean you're going to lay down and dead because pastor not call you? What do you think you're being taught the word for? When you even call me or whatever, or what, I, I'm supposed to be a backup. I am not your source. That's why I'm teaching you about faith. That doesn't matter where you are. And sit and think that you're a weaker, you're a weakling. And I come after you, it make a sad mistake. Because you know you're God. One police officer traveling, and he sees a certain activity, and he suspects that it's a criminal activity. The police officer doesn't go drive back to the station that they drive out from and get police to come and say, you know what? I was over in Mississauga, and I saw something. I would like to get some more officers to come with me. No, they show up at the scene, and they confront whatever, and if they realize... That they need backup. You notice they walk with their right here. And they say, 10-4 or whatever the code is. I need, they would know what that means. I need backup. Some of you are going like me, are your God. That if me not pray for you, you're offended so much that you literally hate me. I am here to point you to God that when your storm show up, you will ride it out with strength, with confidence that I'm going to make it. Even Jesus, when the disciple came and called him in the boat, didn't he say, where is your faith? Send yourself a hell because I didn't do what you think. Like Amen, like um, Amen, Amen, Amen. I thought he would come and smite his hand over my leprosy. After the prophet sent him to Jordan to dip seven times. I thought a lot of you even today, you're coming here with a, with, with a preconceived notion of what should happen. Some of you visitors, you're not receiving nothing right now because you are shocked. I know it's a church, go because you come with a preconceived idea. But if you're of the spirit, if you're connected with the spirit, you know that this man is speaking from the spirit. That's not head knowledge. 
speak a word only. When am I going to find some people like that around me? That when situation, I say, Pastor, I don't want you to come to my house. I don't want you to whatever. I don't even want you to touch me. Pastor, just speak a word. And I know. I know that it. <laughs> That's how they treated the prophets in the scriptures. Those who receive them. When the prophets speak a word, man, they know that it's done. When the apostles speak the word, those who receive them, they know that it's done. We, we, we hear the word, but we still look for something more. Pastor, you know many times that we are in this meeting and I teach and pour out and somebody sit down there waiting with a bottle of olive oil in their hand. Pastor, I want you, I want you blessed. I said, for what? Um, there, there is, there is a, a, a thing with my knee. You sit down in a meeting like this and I wait with your olive oil like I hope your man you come. And you pick your number and I wait for you come up to him for you read you. You come in a meeting like this and the anointing and the word. You say, Father, beat unto me according to your word. You dash with the olive oil in the midst of everything and said, the word... But our, watch this, notice where your faith is, in the oil, not God, not his word. Like the man at the poolside, waiting for 38 years. And every time he tried to step in, somebody that is stronger than him stepped in before. But Jesus walked up and Jesus said, take up your bed and walk. Immediately, immediately. Today, that's supposed to happen in this room. But will it? It all depends on the state of our faith. He says, speak a word only, and my servant will be healed. What did he say? What are you saying? He said that. What are you saying right now? <laughs> oh, Father. What are you saying right now? You, you offended? Are you offended? Are you here to receive the word of God? Are you come here with your preconceived idea of what it should be? If all of us should talk about, some of us won't, because some of us don't want nobody to think that I'm going through anything or whatever. But if all of us should talk about a situation, a situation, or certain circumstances, there might be similarities where some of us are concerned. But each of us, our situation is unique to you. Your situation is unique to you as a person. You notice? Only Job alone. What happened to Job? Only Job alone. Only Job alone. But it served as a, watch this, as a hope. That you and I know that just as our God bring Job out of his situation... That God will also bring me out of my situation. That's why the Bible says in James, remember Job. And what am I saying to you now? That it doesn't matter what your situation is. The word is the answer. It's the word that changed Job's situation. Job said, in all my appointed time, I am going to wait until my change comes. You know what brings that change? The word of God. You know, the word of God brought, changed Job's situation. How do I know? 
The Bible says between Job chapter 38 to 42, the Lord appeared to him in a whirlwind. And God began to speak to him, Marlon. And when God finished speaking to him, Job says, I have heard about you by the hearing of the ears. But now mine eyes have seen you. It doesn't matter what your situation is. You need a word from God. You're telling me, Pastor, that that situation at, at home, you don't know. I don't need to know. Don't come, come and give me bill and receipt. Receive the word. And see God showing off his authority and power in your situation. Mm. This is not how we should start, right? Forgive me, but may I follow the Holy Spirit. If you don't want to follow me, I feel your business. May I follow the Holy Spirit. Speak a word only and my servant will. We, 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 we need to decree a thing. Agree with God and see the manifestation. That one thing I know, that it doesn't matter the hell that come against me. My God is with me. And my God will, he must deliver me. There is no if I'm but more than, there's no maybe. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. He will not be, he is. It's what Psalm 42, where the psalmist says, Soul, why are you cast down in me? Why are you be of the way? You, you have to talk to yourself sometimes, you know? Me say, don't wait for pastor to come. Talk to yourself. Encourage yourself. Say, soul, where are you going with? Why are you cast down within me? Why are you behaving the way you behave? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. He is the health of my countenance. He is the lifter up of my head. He is my glory. He's my shield. He's my buckler. He's my defense. He's my rock. Some of you, your situation have expired already. But because of your faith wavering, you have not yet come out of it. Some of you are in an expiry situation. You should have come out of that already and are going to one another one. In all my appointed time, I am going to wait until my change come. Change is not, when you're in Christ, change is not maybe, perhaps. It must. The storm will come, but it must come to a calm. It must come to an end. Weeping, weeping may endure for a year. Weeping may endure for 10 years. Weeping may endure for life. No, weeping may, may endure for what? A night, but what you're supposed to look for in the morning? I said, some of your situation is that it has been already expired, but you're holding on to it. I don't know for what reason. 
because your joy has already showed up and your joy is waiting on you. But because you are not clothed properly, you can't see your joy. God commanded Israel to mourn for their dead only 30 days. No more. 30 days. It's a commandment. So if you mourn 31 days, you're in disobedience. It's not that God is tough with you. He's protecting you. Because anytime you're mourning, go beyond a certain period, Satan takes it and trap you. I am here to announce to somebody in this room, if you will hear me, your joy has come. Your joy has come. Help me please prophesy to somebody. Just turn to them and say, good morning. Good morning. I said, for somebody in this room today, I'm not gimmick, I'm not giving you gimmickry. For somebody in this room today, for somebody that is watching, good morning. Jesus said, these things I have spoken unto you, that your joy may be full. He said, in this world you will have tribulation, but the tribulation is not going to overtake you, overwhelm you. He said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome. You're supposed to overcome. You're supposed to overcome. You're supposed to overcome that financial situation. You're supposed to overcome that marital situation. You're supposed to overcome that family situation. You're supposed to overcome that sickness. You're supposed to overcome that disease. You're supposed to overcome. You're supposed to overcome because in Christ you are an overcomer. I welcome the persecution because I know that the persecution is going to accomplish something, but I'm not going to hold on to it longer than I should. Because you're supposed to pass through the valley of the shadow of death. You're not supposed to pitch tent and pull out a chair and sit and said, I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm waiting down here by the river. Will you come, Lord Jesus? Satan don't want me to cry. Satan don't want me to cross, Lord. And if you don't come to my rescue, I'll be lost garbage, nonsense. Never you sing that song again. You're not supposed to be black on a river by Satan. I have given you power. I saw Satan when he fell from heaven. It's so a Satan I try to block you. you. What do you do? I started out singing the song in Jamaica. You remember when it just came out? Way back. I started singing, and God said, what are you singing? And, and, and we sing it with this, with this victim mentality. I'm waiting down here by the river. And it sounds good, you know. Will you come, Lord Jesus? Hey, Satan don't want me to cry. Oh, Satan don't want. And if you don't come to my rescue, I'll be lost. He gave you authority. He gave you power. Use that authority and bust Satan's head. Jesus says, you do what with the mountain? Climb it, right? 
And he, did, he exemplified. What did he do with the storm and the wind? Spoke to it. What did he do with the fig tree as an example? Because it wasn't the time of fig. So it was an illustration for the disciples to learn something. What did he do with the fig tree? Curse it. And, and when did it dry up? Have you been speaking to your situation? Yes, you are. Some of you are not speaking to your situation. You're speaking about your situation. Pastor, if you ever know me, I got you for the last two months, Lord, Pastor, pray for me. Oh, Pastor, I know say you're a man of God, and when you pray, God hear you. <laughs> I am not giving any joke, you Come on. <sighs> Open your mouth. Speak to your speak to your mountain. What is your mountain? It could be a sickness, it could be a disease. Stop, don't complain, don't talk about the mountain. Speak to the mountain. You will say to this mountain, be removed from here to there. And it will what? It will, it will. Have faith in God. Speak a word only. Can I continue to follow the Holy Spirit? Yes. Speak a word only and my servant will be healed. So what are you saying with, about your situation? I must. I will. I am. I will say of the Lord, he may be my refuge. I will say of the Lord, he may, he may hear me. He may deliver me. No, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him, I, 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 I will try to trust. In him will I trust. <laughs> because I have set my love upon him, he will lift me up. He will hide me in his pavilion in the time of trouble. He will hear me when I call. In the time of trouble, he will hear me when I call. I want past the part about something about it. Speak a word only, and my servant will be healed. Brother Jackson, you believe that your situation is already taken care of. No, don't answer me. Just listen to me. Because if you believe it, I want to, get, I want to hear the testimony. You need to come inside here and stand up and testify. This is not a joke. This is not Sunday morning church as usual. This is where people come to be equipped. There are certain things at my home. And I just came here in about 2011, 2012 or somewhere. We are living at Jessup Drive in Brampton. Chinkuzi and Sandalwood, major intersection. The furnace, because we're not used to furnace in Jamaica. It is recommended that you service your furnace annually, right? Because there's something about the furnace that is important. That if you don't service it annually, you will have the, sur the furnace malfunctioning. This furnace not functioning properly, brother. So we reach out to somebody and they recommended someone to us and the person came to the house and anytime workman come to my house to do anything me turn up there because you can't leave some of them not do something properly and can charge you all five hundred dollar me stand up there and may I watch <laughs> from that I don't need to call nobody for service my furnace so what did I do I ordered the tool. 
I ordered the tool that I need to go up in another part there, so if it pulled a particular screw there, because you need a special kind of tool to pull it. I order it. So now guess what? I am equipped. I haven't done my service yet, but I know I need to. Sometime this week, I'm going to service it. You, you're getting close to that area now where you need to turn on the furnace. But I have the tool at home that I pull it. Last year I did. I pull and I clean and I vacuum out and I wipe out and I blow out. So when you set the thermostat and you call for something, your furnace, not that they are trying to... Now when you call for it, it's... And you're... And you're... Ready. The word of God equips you to deal with demonic spirits. The word of God equip you to deal with situations. God never tell you that situation would not arise. But he says, my word, I am giving it to you. And you're supposed to hide it in your heart. Stop speaking about your situation from this day forward. I do not want you to be talking about your problem. Speak to the problem. And what are you speaking to it? What are you speaking to the word? What are you speaking to it? The word. Speak to it. Is it a health situation? Speak to it. Which is stripes I am healed. He sent his word and healed those who believe. And Father, I thank you that when Christ died on the cross, he equally paid the price for my health also. So I will not tolerate this. I will not accept it. I will not accept no pain in my joints. I will not accept no stiffness in my body. My body's supposed to be, come on, I'm anywhere I want to go, anytime I want to go, my, support, my body's supposed to work with me. Some of you, when you forget up, oh Lord, Oh. After you know Frankenstein. Anytime you're ready to move, you get up. Sister Patricia, you hear what me I say? You get up. I want to see you one day run up these stairs. You receive it? Yeah. This, you're supposed to put it on somewhere and put it on one nail and say, I remember when I used to use that and I will never use it again for the rest of my life. Amen. You think that because you get all you need, Walker? Imagine me coming here and preach and, you know, I tell you about the power of the Lord and the Reverend Bobby Somers, mighty man of faith and man of God. Imagine Elijah walking with a walker. Come with me now. Imagine Jesus walking with walker. And the apostles walking with walker. Peter walking with walker. And I'm going to tell the crippled man about silver and gold of I none. But such as I have. Give ID. Me no want your walker. He says, such as I have give ID. And when he reached out his hand and hold the man, the Bible said the power of Christ went through him and hit his ankle bone. And immediately the man started to leap. In the name of Jesus, rise up. Rise up! Rise up! Rise up! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! I believe with you, sister. I believe with you. I believe with you. It's only one, one, 
where you're supposed to be led, and it's by the Spirit. Your body not supposed to lead, lead you. Your body not supposed to dictate to you. And so you, well, you know, I would love to, but I can't. Because, Sister P, you shouldn't take you up. It's a part of the... It's a part of the demonstration says something, something where Guan it, it it mash up. You not take it up. If anybody are take you up, make them take you up. Make the Osha take you up. But that's our evidence, that a demonstration says something, something that was there holding. It gone. servant will will be healed speak a word only Speak a word only. He sent his word. Speak a word only. As the snow and the rain comes down from heaven, so is my word. So is my word. There is too many expiry situation in this room. You should have come out of it already. One of the things that Satan never wants is for you to be free. Do you notice that in the scriptures, when God even prophesied way ahead of time, Sister Elizabeth, God prophesied about Israel being taken by a nation for 400 years. God prophesied to Jeremiah that Israel would be taken by the Babylonians for 70 years. The Syrians named the different nations that came and took them into captivity. God always put a time on it. But notice, any time the time that God put on it come to fusion... The ones who are holding them never want to let them go. And notice, God judged them. Egypt never want to let Israel go when the 400 year expiration come. Satan always want to hold you a little longer. But speak a word only. Speak a word only. And once that word is released, oh my God Almighty. Satan wants you to stay in that financial situation for a long time. He, he wants to use it to cripple you. He wants to use it to frustrate you. But in the name of Jesus, says Satan, the expiry date pass. There was an expiry date and the man that was born blind in John chapter 9. Jesus passed. <laughs> what you say? No? Jesus passed by that way many times over. But that particular day is the day. And the disciples said to Jesus, who did sin? Why this man was born blind? Him 
or his parents. A part of that question doesn't make no sense, much less to make faith. How him for sin am born blind? It means that he would have to sin in the womb as a child, <laughs> right? But they ask this question, who, who did sin, him or, you know, his parents, why he was born blind? Jesus said, neither. Watch, watch, watch this. But for the glory of God. <laughs> because God's supposed to get glory out of your situation. But if the expiry date pass and you still are lingering it, God is not getting no glory now. Satan is getting the glory. And Jesus walked over after he said to them, neither did his parents nor. And Jesus walked over, the Bible said. And when Jesus walked over, the man felt a presence and he heard a sound, but he can't see. And Jesus took the clay and Jesus He's hearing spitting going on and I wonder what's going on here. And when Jesus spit in the clay, the Bible said Jesus anointed his eyes with it. And Jesus gave him, watch it, speak a word only. Go to the pool, asylum, wash. What some of you Canadians would say, how am I going to go there? How am I going to find it and I'm blind? What do you do if Jesus said go? Find out. St you start out. And then you go along the way, you hear somebody say, you say, can you, can you help me? I need to go to the pool asylum. You know, sit down there and suck your thumb. Because he speak the word already. Go to the pool asylum and wash. Wash, wash it, you know. It's obedience that is now needed. And the Bible said the man went. However, he went and he washed and what? And he came back. He came back seeing we created a problem because the religious people said, come here. Are you the one that was sitting by the wayside, blind and begging? Yes. How is it that you're seeing? Were you tricking us? So where's your parents? Is this your son that was born blind? Yes. So how is it that he's seeing now? He's of age. <laughs> I asked him. He said, a man called Jesus spit in the clay. He anointed my eyes with it and told me to go and wash. And I came back seeing. Who is the man? Where is he? What did he look like? He said, what question you ask him? I couldn't see him. But I obey him and now I'm seeing. One thing I know, once I was blind, now I'm seeing. They say, he's not of God. Give God the glory. Because if this man was of God, he wouldn't do what he did on the Sabbath. <laughs> Religious people. All some people in this room, you think they're here to celebrate you? You think that they're here to celebrate your breakthrough? They want you to stay in bondage. Somehow we feed off of your bondage. But in the name of Jesus, not let nobody, if you have to get up from beside some people, because some people come in and consider them with their dead self. If you sense anything we are trying to even enter you, get up! Get up! Come down here so come stand up if you have to stand up down here. But make sure... That you're walking out of here today, not being held by your bed, but you are carry your bed. Yes. Hundreds and thousands of people show up in church service on a Sunday morning just to go through the motion and sing song. And there's a whole lot of things happening in their life individually, in their family, in their home. And it's, it's, it's not just something that started a month ago. So years up and years. And they're still, and in their mind, I am faithful because in spite of all of this, you know, I'm still, I'm still putting on my praise. I am not making this up and give you gimmickry. Things must not and cannot continue forever God say after you have suffered a while <laughs> yeah yeah first Peter he said after you have suffered a while after you have suffered a while I am going to establish you I am going to settle you and I'm going to give you peace Have you ever seen an hurricane blowing 
one year, just, you know, Hurricane May, just out there, just a guan, so just a guan, so. And so you know how long that hurricane out there from January, you know? No. <laughs> they have a duration. They start out as a tropical depression. And they end as a tropical depression. One little shower and me gone. Your storm needs to stop. Your storm needs to stop. Your storm needs to stop. Verse 9. After he said, but speak a word only, and my servant will be healed. So for I also am a man under authority. Hey, hey, hey. I also am a man under authority. Ask your neighbor, are you under authority? And you know how, you know how that become real to a lot of you? When you submit to the authority of God in my life, you are assured that you're under God's authority because God is still using men to represent him today. While a lot of us in the church does not believe that and accept that, God is still using men to represent him today. And you know, you have this assurance that because my wife has an assurance that there are certain things that cannot happen to her. You know why? Because she submit to me. And her submission is not forced. It's voluntary. A few Sundays are back. By the leading of the Spirit. And it's not that anything I go on in our life or I go on in the house. But by the leading of the Spirit. She did something that not only represent her. It's the entire church that God is showing that there is a restoration taking place. That the church is coming back in order. And because she submitted to me, being in Christ, she don't just submit to Bobby. She submit to Bobby in Christ. That's the difference. Because she submitted to me in that order, there are certain things that cannot touch her. If it touch her, I am breached. Hmm. Hmm. When did sin touch Eve? When Adam eat the fruit. That's when. That's when. <laughs> Come on, people. Hmm? Of course. Of course, scripture tells you that, that the sanctified mother and the sanctified father sanctify the child, sanctify the children. So until Emmanuel reached that age, he's covered. See, you see, we take scripture lightly. We hear it and we just, and we just play around in a gall boat over the place and we just assess it. We need to, we need to check ourselves. For I also am a man under authority. And for you to exercise authority, you must first be under authority. Let me say that again. For you to exercise authority, you must first be under authority. Why did the demons in the book of Acts ask the seven sons of Sceva, Paul we know, Jesus we know, who are you? Paul was under authority. Jesus was under authority. But they were not under authority. Notice his statement. I am, I am, what you say now? I am a man, I am a man under, I also. So what did he do? He recognized that Jesus was under authority. And the authority that Jesus is under, Jesus didn't need to come to his house. All Jesus needed to do from that authority was speak a word 
only. You see, authority is released by words. Your authority as a parent is not when you're beating your children with a piece of stick. It's what you say. And they should know that when you say something, that's what you mean. Now, if you need to lick them shut, it should be, watch this now, that should be a consequence of something that you said and it was not followed through. So now they're knowing, watch this now, they're getting an understanding that there are consequences when you don't obey authority. I'm using Jamaican term, bussing shot and licking shot and stuff like that. You know, so you can hear them to get all pretty and, you know, and call child service. We're we not bussing man well shot. You ever seen come here with no bus up shot? <laughs> <laughs> but he knows that when we say something, he should obey it. And there are certain consequences that will follow if you did not obey. Because you see, one of the things the scripture says about pastors, about church leaders, proper church leaders, they must first rule their own house, their own family well. Because if they can't do that, how will they take care of the church of God? And in order for them to take care of the church of God, the church has to be submitted to the Christ, the order of Christ in that person. Because that authority is not there to abuse you, but to equip you. Equip you. I am a man also under authority. Having soldiers under me, I say to this one, I say to this one, I say to, notice you know, I say to this one, go. I say to, I say to this one, go. And he goes, I say to another, come. And he come. I say, watch this. I say to my servant. Notice he's not talking about them. He say to, I say to my servant, do this. And he are you, seeing, are you seeing now how faith position you to use your authority? You need to speak to. Marcella, if your hair is falling out, don't talk about it. Speak to it. And believe that when you speak to your hair, you, you will have a body of hair showing up. That it, you, you're not waiting to use whatever for it to by speaking to it because you hear you hear of ears your skin of ears your eye your everything that you can see in this life it has an ear didn't jesus speak to the fig tree how would the fig tree dry up unless the fig tree heard him didn't jesus spoke to the wind Oh, wow. You mean wind of ears? And when he spoke to the wind, what does the scripture say? The wind and the wave obeyed his voice. That the disciple marveled and said, what kind of a man is this? That even the wind and the wave obey his voice. We have too many complaints around me. And do not entertain people talking to you about their problem that even if they come to you and I talk about a, a, a talk to you about a situation it must be that they're getting your agreement to speak to it so you need to stop some of them after a while and say sis you've been speaking over five minutes brother you've been speaking over five minutes and all I'm hearing is that you're talking about your situation come here now what are we what do we need to do because some people you for two hours plus and then just a and Satan say, yes, keep on talking about it. 
keep on talking about it. Vent, because you know you need, you need to vent. This is not psychology and nonsense that we have in the world. We're talking about people in Christ that you speak to your situation. When Elisha went with the men to cut the trees to make, to extend the room that they were in, remember when the axe head fell off and it was a borrowed axe? And they said, alas, my master, it was borrowed. He said, oh, the boys, you see, it's iron. And I can imagine it's already reached the bottom of the, you know, the river and it's over. So we're going to have to search and get one to replace it. What did he say? <laughs> what did he say? And what did he do? He pick a piece of stick, he pick a piece of limb, branch from a tree. And my God, the man of God, dip it in the water. And what happened? The Bible said the ox said, made from iron. Naturally, it defies the law of the laws of gravity, logics, and everything. May I tell you now, a lot of you, I talk about faith, you are a joke. Because you are stuck by the natural. Your faith is, is, is bound by what is natural. You're saying, even some of you, when I say something, how can that be? Continue saying that. The Bible said, why would he, why would he? And I promise you, the servant never expect that he would have done something like that. But one thing they know, they recognize that he's a prophet, he's a man of God. And if there's a situation, we're going to him. We don't know how God going to work through him. So they said, alas, the ox said was borrowed. He pick a piece of tree. He pick a piece of tree, dip it in the water, and the iron, the iron, the water became, the water became heavier than the ox said. And the ox said, swim, the scripture said. And he said, get it. What is your situation? Why you come after you go sleep? What is your situation? Some of you come with all your pretty self and the devil like heat out your back. What is your situation? There is a tree that was already cut. There was a tree that Christ has already hung on. That tree, the Bible said when we preach it, it is foolishness to the Jews. The Greek, they're looking for a sign. But to those of us who are in Christ, it is the power of God. Every day I'm listening to the scripture and I said to my wife, I say, how many of us really believe the scripture? Everything from Genesis 1 to Revelation, it's all, it's outside of the senses. In the beginning, God spoke the world into being. Outside of the senses. A barren woman, Sarah, that passed the age of childbearing, have a son beyond our senses. And if you notice, God used a lot of barren women in the scripture. Samuel's mother was a barren. God used Elizabeth, watch it, Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mother. She was well advanced in age, past the age of childbearing. She said, the notice for five months she hid herself. What, what was going on here? And then she came out and she said, the Lord has taken away my reproach. Because she was called a barren. Jesus turned water into wine. You see, a lot of you have a Bible and talk about you read Bible. Do you believe that book? Because you see, a lot of people that come, come against me, all pastors where fight against me and attack me and fighting and one. Some of them want to get rid of me out of Canada like them won Canada. The difference between me and them, I believe the Bible. I believe the word of God. It's not a joke for me. It's not something that I do on a Sunday morning. It is my life. And you're going to see how this will end. You're going to see how this will end. You're going to see if God sent me here or did I take it upon myself and come here. 
you're going to see. The axe head fell into the water and sunk. And the man of God picked a piece of tree branch, dip it in the water, and the axe head float. I'm sorry because your situation is beyond God, right? That's why you are stress yourself, all right? That's why you are worried so much. That's why you, can't go, you can't even go to your bed and get a proper sleep, right? Because I have to help God. I have to calculate and tell God this and show God. God don't need no explanation from you. What he wants is faith. Hear this. Hear this. Are you seeing where the Spirit is going with the meeting today? Are you seeing this? He says, when I say to my servant, go, he goes. When I say to my servant, come, he comes. When I say to my servant, do this, he does it. When Jesus heard it, people, when Jesus heard it, What did he hear? When Jesus heard it. Brother Wes, you're getting it, my brother? Uh, when Jesus heard it. So what God is listening for? What God is listening for? What God is looking for? God is listening and God is looking. I'm going to show you. God is listening and God is looking. When you open your mouth and talk, what is it that God is hearing? What God hear, can God, can God find pleasure in it? Can God work with it? When Jesus heard it, so faith can be heard and faith can be seen. How do you hear faith and how do you see faith? I'm sorry, visitors, that whoever invites you never tell you about here. Say, so we don't go by program, we go by the spirit. Come and see some of you are fight sleep. <laughs> Me not going to do nothing else to keep you awake. If the word can't, you're there at the wrong place. When Jesus heard it, he, Jesus, marvel. Christ in Jesus marveled. You mean me can marvel, God? You, do you know what the word marvel mean? Do you know what the word marvel mean? Ah, oh, for the first time in the entire life of Israel, Jesus heard the faith that God was looking for. And it wasn't coming from a Jew. It wasn't coming from an Israelite. For some of us, We've been in church settings for years until when you see them. Some people, when you look on them, you know, say they're a Christian. And that's all they are. They have no power. They have no authority. There is no fruit of God's kingdom manifesting. And you can't tell them that, you know? Because they convince themselves that they know God. Yet, where is the evidence? Where is the evidence? Because sometimes, sometimes some of you are caught complaining about your situation and when you're caught you say well i'm not really complaining then what are you doing what are you doing i'm not really i'm, I'm not really you see the self-righteousness i'm not really complaining but but <laughs> When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, to those who followed, assuredly, I say to you, I have not found. So if you can find faith, it can be seen. 
And for you to find something, you would have to be looking for it. I have not found, I have not found what kind of faith in this room under this kind of teaching, under this, under this ministry, under this kind of example. We're talking to somebody a few days ago, and you, I said, because the person said, based on the situation that has happened, they choose not to question God about it. They're just trusting God. And I said to the person, because the person was there, I said, you remember when our first child came? Because my wife had about three or four miscarriage, and the first one that came lived for only two hours and ten minutes. You watch me. You did even know that our baby died. I came and I preach, and it's after I told you at the end of the meeting, and a wooliper you start ball. Hey, Pastor, why you didn't call? Why you didn't tell us before? If me did tell you before me teach, you would have never hear anything that I'm teaching. All you that think about poor Pastor. <laughs> Me no want you sorry for me. Me no want you cry for me. Because faith in God changes every situation. Even when God not take you out of the storm, when your faith is in a right alignment, you ride out the storm. And you not ride it out as a victim. You're riding it out as a... And I said to a person, you know what? One brother came to our house and was saying all kind of things. And I stopped him and said, brother, stop. Don't bother try to go on the top about Satan, this and that. I said, leave it alone. I said, I am glad that God allowed me to be a father for two hours and ten minutes. I held her in my arm and watched until the last breath left her body. And I took that casket. You remember? I told him, I don't want the earth to carry the casket. I walk with the casket from the chapel and bring it down to the graveside. And I didn't skip a beat. What caused that? My, I'm not pretending. If I was pretending, what? I would have cracked a long time. And you, many of you were there when certain attacks started to come to the ministry. Some leave because their faith was not intact. They never had the proper tool to fix their furnace. And when the cold front lick them, then run and say, no, something wrong with this ministry because all these things were gone and this and that. But have you watched me? You notice? I have not skipped a beat. You know, I continue steadfastly. The anointing gets stronger on me. Revelation become more abundant. My God Almighty. And they're out there expecting us to wrap up and feel. And then say, yes, but look at us. We are moving on. And we're moving on not weak. We're not moving on in weakness. We're moving forward in power, in anointing, in authority. As long as your faith remain intact, money will come. As long as your faith remain intact, building will come. Watch and see. As long as your faith remain intact, everything that we need to continue as a ministry, it's already there. Come. I'm calling for the building. I know some of you are doubters in here, but I want those of you that agree with me. We're calling for a building. We're calling for a building. We're not going to wait until we see a million dollars in the account. God, no, come on here. There was a day. There was a day when Jesus entered into Jerusalem. When he entered the city, he turned to the disciples and said, 
Who do they take taxes from? The sons or the strangers? They say strangers. So, oh, well, the sons are free. So, okay. But let us not offend them. Go down to the sea. Go down to the sea. May I tell you, how many of us really believe the scriptures? Go down to the sea. Cast your hook. Whether the hook have worm on it or not. Because it's not the worm that is going to catch the fish. It's a word that was spoken. He said, go down to the sea. Cast your hook into the sea. And watch this. And the first fish, not the second fish, not the third fish, not the fourth fish. The first fish that comes up, open its mouth. And you will find a piece of money. Go and pay for us. We're going to own a building. We're going to own a building. And we're not do this to prove nothing to the enemy. We are show off God. We're going to own a building without all the, all the natural requirements. Me say, we're going to own a building. And we no, 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 look a, no look a tighter place. Something that is going to facilitate what God wants to accomplish. Show us. The building is already there. Is it in Mississauga? Is it in Brampton? Where is it? Can you hear the building calling you? Somebody's going to come and look for us. Somebody's going to come and look for us. Mm, sit down there. Well, let me see if that really is going to happen. All right, Thomas. You can continue chat with Judas. <laughs> A Peter, James, and John may I look for. Come, Peter, James, and John. Come with me. I'm looking for Esther. I'm looking for Deborah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm looking for Jahel. I don't want the complainers. Mm. Somebody is looking for us. Somebody is looking for us. A building is looking for us. We have been looking for a building. We have been looking for a building. But now a building is looking for us. The disciples went and fish and they tile all night. And they caught nothing. But when Jesus spoke the word and said, cast the net on the right hand side. They weren't the one at that time now that was fishing. The fish was looking for them. The fish was waiting for them. And the Bible said when they catch, the net was breaking. They called out for help. I'm telling you today, fish is looking for you. Brother Patrick, can you receive it? You have been fishing for years and no catch nothing yet. But may I tell you today, fish, I look for you now. So when you don't have any bait, the fish are going to come. Did you know that if man did not sin, we would not need hook and bait to catch fish? Did you know that if man did not sin... A lot of the things that we're relying on right now to survive, we would need it. Because man was given dominion over the fish of the sea. So anytime dinner time, you just go to the sea and hold out the pan. And they just jump in there and call the ones that you want. This evening, snapper, red one, pink one, which one you want? I'm serious. Because how did Noah get the animals in the ark? God said, you're going to bring two by two, the clean ones. How did he get them in? Go and tame them for a week and tame them for a month. With the word that was given to him, he just show up and decree what God says. And the lion started following him, the giraffe and who all of them? That's the authority that man was given. But sin contaminated. And we say we're born again and still continue to be bound by the natural. Well, in this country, pastor, you have to have good credit. I am saying it again. The fish is looking for you. Amen. 
The fish is looking for you. The fish is looking for you. You're not going to catch the fish. The fish is going to catch you. And we're waiting for the testimonies. And when you're testifying, mark down this date. Mark it down. When you're testifying, you come back to that this was the day when that particular word was released. Everything we bound ourselves by the natural. Well, if we're going to do this, we need this because this is the law. This is the law. I'm not saying we're going to go there and break law and whatever, but we're talking about being in the kingdom of God. When Jesus warned donkey, he said, come here, come here, come here, come here. He said, go over, go over to um, which other city over the other side of Mississauga? Oakville. He said, go over to Oakville and go on such and such a place and you will see a donkey and the colt of the donkey tie. He said, loose them and bring them to me. And hear this. And if anyone asks you, why are you losing the donkey? Tell them that the Lord have need of it. There is a building that God have need of because of this ministry. I loose that building right now. I command that building to find us right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care how much million it costs. We're going to stop renting. And everything will come and talk about law and law and law and law. We're talking about the kingdom of God. I am going to demonstrate the kingdom in front of you. And you can either come into it or walk away from it. We're going to have building without all of that, that they think that we have to take it. It's going to take years. What, what would have taken us years is going to take us months. Watch this, months. And what would have taken us months is going to take us weeks. And what would have taken us weeks, Marlon, I'm prophesying today, it's going to take us days. And what would have taken us days, it's going to take us hours. And what would have taken us hours, it's going to take minutes. And what would have taken minutes... Mark my word today under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I prophesy. Mark it down. There's an acceleration. There is an acceleration. There is an acceleration in the spirit. There is an acceleration in the spirit. I said there is an acceleration in the spirit. There is an acceleration in the spirit. There is an acceleration in the spirit. Stop thinking years. Stop thinking months. Stop thinking about years. Stop thinking about months. Think about day, hour, minute. Seconds. The woman with her blood, 12 years. But when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, how long? How long? How, 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 how long did it take? How, how long? When the devil think I'm done, we're done. I come, we just I come. The enemy had other plans. The enemy had other plans. The enemy said they're going to go now. They're going to go. It's going to be over now. It's done. But God says no. I don't know if the person who sings the song is from Jamaica or wherever, but you, you, you hear the song say, when the devil said no, Jesus said, oh. and there's another one where they say, it's a fun to see, a fun to see Satan lose. Jesus is the winner man, the winner man, the winner man. And we say, Jesus is the winner man, the winner man. Yes, 
So I'm using that as an example for you to get what the Spirit has said to you today. Stop thinking years. Stop thinking months. Can you get your faith to think days, hours, minutes? And then when you finish with minutes and seconds, what are you talking about? Immediately. Immediately. When the famine showed up in Israel, and when the prophet came and prophesied and said, by tomorrow, this time, uh, a, a certain amount of wheat and this will be sold for this. And the king's right hand man said, even if God opened the windows of heaven, such a thing cannot be. Even if God opened the windows of heaven, you can't get no building without having certain assets. Because the bank want asset. Who you think who owned the bank? You think of the man then we start to own it? God who owned it. God used Cyrus to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. God used Pharaoh to fund Moses. Even if God opened the windows of heaven, it cannot be. Watch. Watch. 2023, watch. 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 Sister Judy, a lot of things have happened in 2023, you know? So, so every one of us, we experience different type of things in 2023. But I promise you today, it will not end as it starts. And it will not end as it has been going. 2023 does not have the final word. God does. Speak a word only. 2023 doesn't control you. God does. His word does. Some of you are not even, it's not even going to end you in debt. You're going to be debt free. I said you're going to be debt free. <gasps> what pastor? Even if God opened the windows of heaven, how can that be? How many of you in, in this room still hold the government, what the school, uh, OSAP? You still hold OSAP? All right. Hold on here. You hear what he said? He owed the government $27,000 in OSAP and he got a letter the other day saying that it's... <laughs> Under $30,000 loan in 2015. Wow. I am saying today, do not let the natural imprison you. Do not let credit score imprison you. God word must dictate to you. The natural way, we go out in the night, we use the drug net to catch fish. The daylight, you come in and you wash your net and dry it with the hope that we will go out tonight again. But notice Jesus didn't come in the night because that's the natural way. Jesus came in the day when the sun high and he said, cast your net. But Lord, we toiled all night and we caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, at your word. What are you telling people? You, 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 you're messing up people when you're telling them that Margaret free house. Think I get up out of myself and say that, and I'm still prophesying it. Yes. Even some of you that have a mortgage, expect. Yes. Expect the unusual. Yes. Do not sit down waiting to pay it off in 20 years. Do not sit down waiting to pay off the next 10 years. Do not sit down waiting to pay off the next 15 years. Speak to your situation. Speak to it. 
we need to show off the kingdom. We're not like the rest of the world around us. We're not like the rest of the people that are in Canada. We are in the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, the supernatural is a normal, natural thing for us. It doesn't shock us. We give God glory when it happens, but we're not shocked because it's a part of our life. Thank you. My God, how did this all start? Where are we? How will this end? When Jesus heard it, it, faith, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith. Not, notice he said the man, faith was what? Great. great. I have not so found such great faith. What makes faith great? What makes faith great? I have not sound, found such great faith. What makes faith great? Having more? What most of us pray for when situation arises, what we pray for? Lord, I need more faith. Pastor, pray for me. I need some more faith. It's not more faith that makes faith great. Watch the man carefully. Watch his words carefully. Because when he said what he said, the Bible said Jesus heard it. Great faith is how you think. Great faith is how you speak. Great faith is how you act. How was this man thinking? What was his thinking? Lord, you do not need to come to my house. Speak a word only. They have taught us, where the present church is concerned, they have taught us that we need to have something, we need to do something, we need to have something, we need to do something, we need to have something, we need to do something. You have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do, you have to do, you have to do. Now, if God speaks to you about sowing seed, I will never tell you to do it. If God tell you, then by all means. Because the Lord spoke to a sister a few weeks back to do something. And she obeyed the Spirit. And she came up here and she told some of you, some of you, you know, respond. And she was the first and she put the money. And now she have a testimony. And when she did something else, and my wife was even saying, she said, no, I am obeying the Lord. So when the thing manifested the other day, no, she sent the message and she said, you remember when I told you that God said I should do this? Now this is the result. That God did something for her that naturally it should not have happened. But it happened. I said, naturally, it should not have happened, but it happened. I'm telling you, I've been prophesying it from the day. Marlon, Marlon, there is about to be some ridiculous, ludicrous wow. miracles and demonstration that when you're talking about it, people are going to scratch their head and say, they're either going to think one or two things. You're mad. Or they know that God is able to do it. How many of you are willing to be a participant? Then so be it. So be it. So be it. And when you experience it, even when nobody else believes you, you can't deny it. You can't deny it. You can't deny it. <laughs> Holy Spirit, the way I do with me today. Me I follow you now. Me don't know where them I go. Me don't know who them I follow, but me I follow you. Watch this now. Verse 11. Jesus says, Jesus marveled. When he heard it, he marveled. When he heard it, he marveled. And said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found. So he was looking for it. 
I have not found so great faith, such great faith, such great faith, not even in Israel. What did I say great faith is? A way of thinking, a way of speaking, and a way of acting. The woman with your blood, Jesus also said her faith was great. What did we see with that woman that Jesus classified as great faith? We saw a way of thinking. She said, if I only touch the hem of, of, of his garment, I shall be made whole. And what did she do? She went and she pressed and she touched. And she kept on saying, if I but touched the hem of his garment. Because when you're losing blood, your body weak. Because the blood is what circulate the oxygen and certain things through the body. So when you're losing blood, you're literally losing life, the life of the flesh. But she kept on saying something that gave her the strength. When you say what God says, it infuses strength in you. Then, verse 11, watch this. I'm going to show you. How the faith, that, that's why we need to examine ourselves, we need to test ourselves. Faith is tied into the kingdom of God, life in the kingdom of God. The kingdom is meant to work a certain way. Would I put ED on there? Worked a certain way. certain way the question is what does that look like hear what Jesus said and I say to you in verse 11 that many will come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham Isaac and Jacob where where? In the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom. Now he's speaking about those, the Jews, the Israel, whom the promise was given to first because of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they did not receive it. He said, but the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Watch this now. Verse 13. Then Jesus said to the centurion, 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 then Jesus said to Marlon, then Jesus said to Asan, then Jesus said to Keisha, then Jesus said to Marcella, then Jesus said to Elizabeth, then Jesus said to Bobby, then Jesus said, what's your name? Then Jesus said, then Jesus said, then Jesus said, watch this, you know. He said, speak a word. He said to Jesus, speak a word. What was the word Jesus speak? Go your way. Go your way. And as you have, as you have, so uh, how are you going to see the manifestation? <laughs> Judy, do you believe? Go your way, and as you have believed, so, this is the amen, so let it be done. When you're saying amen, you know, that's one of the things you're saying, you know, so let it be done. God, you said it, so amen, so let it be. So let it be. Amen. So let it be. <laughs> that's why you have to be careful what you amen. Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done. What, what, what's the conclusion here now? And his servant took about a month. His servant took about a week. His servant took days to be healed. And his servant was healed when? So when are you believing God for your situation to change? Wow. <laughs> 
what, what, if, if you need to give a topic to the meeting today, what would be the topic? Hmm? Faith? <laughs> Speak a word. Only. And my situation will be changed. My situation, there's another word that we now need to use, not will, but it has past tense. So I've already received it. It's already done. God is working where he needs to work. We need to stop worry for God. And we need to stop worry about God. I need to be too, you need to stop being concerned about how God is going to manage to take care of my situation. God does not need your help. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know you love God, but he doesn't need your help. So some of us even don't pray about certain things that we're going through because we say, God, I have so much to deal with already. I'm not going to add anything to, to, to his, his woes. Do you know who God is? I am God and I faint not. The young man in, it, in his prime, in his strength, will grow weary. I am God and I faint not. And I'm saying to you that if you're trusting me, you will mount up with wings like an eagle you will you will run you will walk and not even feel weary because i am god when is the situation hard for god even when death show up you shouldn't stop unless god say otherwise because death is not the end for God. Even when the thing is stink, stench set in. You remember what, you remember what Martha said? By this time, he stinketh. But what did Jesus say? Roll away the stone. You know what the stone is? Doubt, unbelief, wavering. But Lord, by this time, he stinketh because he has been in the grave before four days now what's the instruction what is the word roll away the stone how long have you been going through that situation what's the nature of it what the intensity of it do not tell God about it what does God say to you obey be it unto me according to your word how can a woman be pregnant without a man having sexual intercourse with her. Be it unto me according to your word. A virgin is pregnant. Naturally, if you're pregnant, you're not a virgin. But a virgin shall be with child. Yai, yai, yai. <laughs> a virgin shall be with child, not touched by a man, but you have a, you're pregnant. Be it unto me according to your word. Jesus talked about the word being seed. The word for seed in the Greek, it's the word sperma, from which we get the word sperm. You know what sperm does? So right now, as I release the word in this room, it is the sperm of God. Are you receiving the fertilization? And once fertilization takes place, there is supposed to be certain activity that is now taking place. 
So it's not when you see the manifestation, it happened, Brother Patrick. It happened when? Right now. Right now. It's not when the woman gave birth, she got pregnant. It's not when the woman gave birth, she got pregnant. <laughs> the birthing is evidence, clear evidence that you were pregnant and carrying. Glory to God. Stand with me. Do we have anyone in this room today that need healing in your body? Do we have anyone in this room that need a certain manifestation if you believe that? Wherever you're standing, you don't even have to necessarily come down here. I just want you, I just want you to stand right where you are, right? And you're going to begin to speak. Don't wait for me to even pray. You're going to begin to speak. Based on what you have heard, the word you receive, begin to speak to your situation right now. Begin to speak to it. Begin to speak to it. If you want to speak out, if you want to speak under your breath, however, but you're going to speak. I will say of the Lord, he is. So begin to speak to it. Begin to speak to it. Speak to that family situation. Speak to that health situation. Is it your eyes? Is it your earring? Is it your skin? Is it certain organs in your body? What is it that is on the exterior? Hmm? What is going on around you? Speak to your financial situation. Don't complain. Don't talk about it. Speak to it. If you truly believe God to restore your marriage, then speak to it. And both have to be in agreement. Both have to be in agreement. Ladies, if you know that the husband is no longer, don't, don't speak to it. Husbands, if you know that the wife is no longer in agreement with you, don't speak to it. It's gone because it takes two. It takes two. The only way you're going to go ahead and speak, if God give you a specific word, if God give you a direct word, then by all means, go ahead. But speak to the situation. Speak to that situation at work. Speak to that situation at work. You don't have power over the will of a person, but you have power, you have authority over any demonic influence that is influencing the person to come against you. So speak to the spirit. Speak to the spirit. Shut down the spirit. Do you recognize what spirit is it? The spirit, you can know the spirit based on the manifestation. You can know the spirit based on the manifestation. So is there a lot of contention going on? Then what? You know that it's a spirit of contention. Is there confusion? Constant confusion going on? You know that it's a spirit of confusion. Speak to the spirit. Speak to the spirit. You don't need to ask the spirit what his name. Look at the manifestation. You identify what that spirit is and you speak to the root of that situation. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this privilege. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for allowing us to be in this room. And Father, every single one of us in this room, there are unique situations that we are encountering and it is all meant, for those of us that are in you, it is meant to bring glory to you. It is meant to bring glory to you, Father. And Father, whatever situation that shows up, there is a time limit. There is an expiration date that you have already placed on it that is supposed to go this long. And Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, what the enemy has been doing with some of us, he has been causing us to waver we have been in and out, up and down. We are double-minded. But today, Father, we have heard a word. We have heard a word to stabilize our faith. We have heard a word to stabilize our faith. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are speaking to the mountain. We're speaking to the mountain. We're speaking to trees. We're speaking to wind. We're speaking to the wave. We're speaking to the storm. We're speaking to the situation. And we know without a shadow of a doubt, it must obey. It must obey. Father, you told us in your word, 
in Isaiah chapter 55, 10 and 11, you said that as the snow and the rain comes down from heaven, waters the earth, cause the earth to bud and bring forth. It produced bread for the eater and seed for the sower. You said, so is my word. So is my word. Father, we don't get it. We don't get it. So is my word. Some of us saw the rain falling this morning. So is my word. So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It shall not, it shall not, it shall not, it shall not, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish. It shall accomplish. It's going to accomplish in your situation. It's going to accomplish in that sickness. It's going to accomplish in that disease. It's going to accomplish in that financial situation. It's going to accomplish in that place situation at the work. It's going to accomplish in the situation of the family. It must accomplish. It shall accomplish in the thing where to I sent it. It's going to accomplish and it's going to prosper. It's going to accomplish and it's going to prosper. It's going to prosper and it's going to accomplish in the thing where to I sent it. So you and I now must believe that when we use the authority of Christ and speak to our situation, our words must accomplish and prosper in what we have sent it to. In what we have sent it to. And your word cannot come back to you empty. Your word cannot come back to you empty. Believe it. Believe it. That your word cannot come back to you empty. Because it's not your authority that is on the line. It's Christ's authority. In my name, you shall cast out demons. In my name, you shall lay hands on the sick. In my name, whatsoever you ask the Father. In my name, it shall be done. It shall be done. So align yourself. Align yourself. Align yourself. Align yourself in righteousness. 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 Because the effectual fervor and prayer of a righteous man, a righteous man, a righteous man, a righteous man, avails, avails much. It makes tremendous power available. You're not going back to the situation at home the way you left it. Before you walk out of this building, it has changed. You're not going back to that place of work tomorrow morning if it's tomorrow morning. Or for some of you, you might be going this afternoon. You're not going back and see that. It must. It must change. It has changed. It will change. It has changed. Father, we believe it. We receive it because a word has been released. You are the living God. You cannot lie. Your word has been spoken. And Father, when we read the Bible, we will no longer read it as a, as a, a mere book or as the newspaper or some magazine. But we understand that all scriptures are given by inspiration of God. And we're going to rightly divide it. And we're going to know how we ought to function. Because, Father, faith is under attack daily. The enemy is doing so many things to undermine our faith. He comes into the marriage and he's using the situation to undermine our faith. He comes into the family. He's using children to undermine the faith of parents because they don't know how to let go of their children. They don't know how to let go of certain things. They're still blaming themselves for decision that their children have made behind their back. They, they weren't the one who told them to go and do it. And they're blaming themselves, beating themselves up and walking under guilt and shame and condemnation. Father, may we understand understand how we ought to function as your people that we're able to see the manifestations the demonstrations of your authority and your power I pray father that today the bubbles has been broken the bubbles have been broken some of us have been trapped in that bubble for a long time the Holy Ghost has sticked the bubble 
and burst it. You are free. You are free. You're not going to be walking around in that bubble anymore. You are free. And whom the Son has made free is free indeed. But Father, as we leave this room today, as we leave this building today, we're leaving with a word. We're leaving with a word. We're leaving with a word. We're not leaving with offense. We're not leaving with offense. We're leaving with a word. Sister Don, where is Don? What's the name of your grandson? Darren. Which hospital is he in in Jamaica? Spanish Town Hospital. Darren, Father, we send the word to the Spanish Town Hospital in Jamaica. Father, he has been having high fever, and there are other things that the doctors are seeing, and they transfer him to the Kingston, the Spanish Town Hospital. Father, we send the word to the Spanish Town Hospital. We send the word to the ward. We send the word right now to the bed that Darren is on. I rebuke the fever. I rebuke the fever. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. I shut it down. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, right now, Father, Darren's parents is not able to hear us naturally. Darren is not able to hear us naturally. But I'm speaking to his spirit. I'm speaking to angels. I'm speaking from the spirit. And so right now, I command that fever to go. I command the virus that is working behind the scene to go. And in the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for Darren being raised up, coming out of that hospital, going home. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, we speak a word right now, and we thank you that it is so. And for anyone else in this room, whatever it is, and whoever they're standing for, and whatever they're believing, Father, we have heard a word, and we are acting upon that word. We're going to, even though we have tiled all night and caught nothing, at your word, we're going to cast the net on the right-hand side. At your word, we're going to cast the net on the right-hand side. And Father, we're going to go against what is natural. Naturally, they said, this cannot be done without this. This cannot be done without this. This cannot, but Father, at your word, we're going to go. And we're going to do. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! 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 Faith is built on hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So when you hear the word, your faith that was out of alignment is supposed to be realigned. And what instructions the Spirit will give you? Act upon it. Not foolishness, not presumption. What word, what instruction the Spirit gives you? Act upon it. And when you act upon it, there will be a demonstration, a manifestation, a performance of those things that was told to you. There will be a performance. <laughs> there will be a performance. So, Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We receive a building, Father. We're, we, we, Father, we're not going to let the natural limits us. Father, you know, you know that naturally we don't have the money. We don't have the assets that bank will require in order for them to give us a loan or a mortgage. Father, even if we're going to go to a private lender, which their interest rate will be higher, they're still looking for assets. Father, no private lender no lend you no money without you have something that they can take back later on if you can't pay them back. So, Father, naturally, 
Naturally, they're mocking us. Naturally, they're laughing at us. They're jeering us. But, Father, we look to you. Our eyes are upon you. Our faith is in you. Go ahead and show off yourself. Go ahead and show off yourself. You know why this ministry exists. You know why this ministry exists. Especially, Father, at such a time as this. When your people are lost and have been deceived by so many preachers. We have so many charlatans in the church today, Father. You know why this ministry exists. It's to represent the truth and nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. So, Father, everything that is necessary for us to continue as a ministry and accomplish our assignment and to finish our race. We're not here to compete with anybody because if you sent others, we shouldn't be competing. We should be working together to accomplish one goal. So, Father, we're not here to compete. And so whatever is necessary for us to finish our race, Father, so be it. So be it. So be it. We receive the building. We receive funds. We receive, we receive furnitures. We receive... <laughs> Everything that is needed, Lord, we receive it. You know how to do it. You know where, you know when. You know, Father, who to speak to. And Father, I thank you that there are some Cyrus in Canada and in America and wherever you, around the world that you will speak to, and they're going to obey you. And funds are going to come to us, Father. Things are going to come to us. You're speaking to Cyrus. You're speaking to Cyrus. Father, you're speaking to Cyrus, and Cyrus is hearing you. And when they try to block the work, when they go back and check the records, they saw where Cyrus made a decree, made a decree that the house of God should be built. And he said, therefore, let it be done speedily. Let it be done speedily. Let it be done speedily. So, Father, thank you. We receive it. Father, if it's land that you see necessary for us to get now, we receive it. We receive it. Whatever is necessary for us to finish our race and finish it to your glory, we receive it in Christ's name. And the people of God say, Amen. the inheritance of God say, Amen. the saints of God say, Amen. the church of God say, Amen. the sons of God say, Amen. the sons of God say, Amen. Sons in the kingdom say, Amen. so be it, 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 that's amen, that's amen, so be it, I love you, I bless you. What a strange meeting. I have the mic for you to come and read. <laughs> but so be it. So be it. God's willing, we will regroup. And Saturday, our time of corporate fasting, um, 